Okay, I'd like to welcome on my far left we have Nick Vince who plays Kinski in Nightbreed and directly next to me we have Simon Bamford who plays Anarka. So, Nightbreed, when the original cut came out, obviously that was a very different film from the script that you were shooting at the time. Mm -hmm. How did you feel when you saw that original cut? What are you bastards done? <laughs> <laughs> it really, I mean, it's just so different. We filmed this beautiful romantic story uh, which took you into a place where there were monsters, really exciting monsters. Um, and there was this story, of, a romantic story, about a woman who falls in love with a man who has got issues, um, thinks he's a murderer. Um, and then, you know, just, just take you to Minion where the monsters mm -hmm. flap. Um, and it was very exciting. It was a, it was the book Cabal yeah. that we had originally filmed. Yeah, I think I think this the original book when you read it, it really did make me cry. I thought yeah. this is this is a great story, and then the screenplay came through, and it was ten times better than the book. Yeah. Um, and I think everybody who was working on the movie at the, at the time was really excited. There was a yeah. lot of buzz about it as we were filming it. Yeah. So when we finally saw it at the uh, the Odeon West End. Um, it was an enormous letdown, to be honest, mm. that, that something that everybody had such high hopes for just hadn't reached where it was supposed mm. to be. It, mm. it didn't seem to be the same story. It was, yeah. it, it was a mess. I actually walked out halfway through, <laughs> which was probably not good career-wise, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> I've made up for it now. Yeah. So, was Notes to any... self, never walk out yeah. halfway through full press screen. Right. <laughs> was, was there ever a sense when you were filming that the, the studio weren't confident in what, what they were saying? Or was that sort of just later? I mean, there were kind of rumours. I mean, there were a number of stories. I remember the stories like five having arguments with Joe Rapp and so the, on. There was a little bit at the end where they realised they needed to do pickups, um, mm. but there was no money for them. Yeah. And they had a big meeting at Pinewoods, where all the cast and the crew were there, and they said, look, we need to do these shots to finish the film, but we have no money yeah. left. So, um, unless you all do it for free, basically. Mm. So basically they were asking us yeah. if we wanted to finish the film, and we all said yes, didn't we? Mm. So I suppose that was a kind of early yeah. indication that things weren't going the way they were expecting. Yeah. It was certainly very different to Hellraiser, because Hellraiser was the complete opposite. Yeah. We, we started with a very small budget, we were thought we were all making this very small English film, and then halfway through the rushes got over to the States, and suddenly right. all this money was being <laughs> put into it, and rewrites and yeah. changing the ending, and... Uh, they got very excited, so yeah, there was definitely a reversal from the two. Right. So, how did you feel when you heard that the, you know some missing footage had been unearthed and that they were going to work on creating the Cabal cut? Hugely excited. Hugely excited. There'd been a kind of a, a growing interest from uh, people we'd met at conventions. Yeah. Um, more people were talking about the film, um, and there'd been more chatter about it online. So. Yeah. There was definitely an interest that was growing, and I talked to Clive yeah. about that, and, and he was very excited that something that I think he was very personally upset by his yeah. treatment by the mm. studios, by yeah. everybody yeah. else. It was his second film, and he was kind of ruined by it in an awful lot of ways. Um, so the fact that he could kind of justify everything that he did yeah. was, was great in his eyes. Um, still, we still have to find the the film footage, yeah. the VH fo yeah. H footage is, is, is good, but the film footage would be even better, sure. I think. And having seen it just then, I also think if they could get maybe uh, Danny Elfman to maybe write some mm. new yeah. um, underscore to it as well, that would help. Yeah, it's still very much a work in progress. Very much a work so in progress. Yeah. But incredibly, incredible. I saw a work print of it um, at Horror Find in the States a couple yeah. of years ago. And that, well, to be honest, was a real mess. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't sure what to expect today, and mm. I was really, really surprised. I was going to ask, obviously, seeing it in the, in the Empire, what's your reaction now that you've seen the, this new cut? It's, it's, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just, it's so close now to the original movie that we thought we were yeah. making. I think that's the exciting thing. Um, there's so much more of Laurie and Boone, and as I mentioned earlier on, this this story about Laurie and Boone and her relationship and what she eventually does for the man she loves uh, and the pursuit of the man she loves, it kind of makes just more sense and so on. And I was going to say, the, you know, the bits uh, towards the end of the movie now, which I do find harrowing, mm -hmm. where uh -huh. to, you know, as you should, it, 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 as you should, you know, because you've got some emotional depth there. Now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love it. 
really, really exciting. I think it has play. time at the beginning to let you empathise with the characters, which you never yeah. did before. So you actually mm. like the two leads, which of course yeah. is crucial to, yeah, to most films. Mm. Um, and then there's time at the end where you, you kind of, again, you empathise with the creatures being destroyed. Mm. Um, I think there's an awful lot more of Clive in there as well. There's, there's kind of a lot of mm. sexual passion and innuendo, which is mm. certainly there in the Hellraiser films. There's that kind of line between sensuality and passion and aggression, which aggression's maybe not the right word, but, but that, that, that ultimate, well, ultimate passion and, 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 and uh, I get that. Because, Love. Because the, the song that was missing from the... From the that was moment, great, wasn't and, it? Um, and Bobby singing Johnny Get yeah. Angry. Um, that's just fabulous. And, and the, the kind of reprise is in the background towards the end as well. Mm. As I say, you know, the, there is a very... There's a one thought. I don't think it's obsessional, really. She loves it. You yeah. Know, she really loves Boone. He really loves her. Yeah, loves her. And that's what you get from the movie. But there's that nice scene where um, she... He, he's making love to her as he's changing, and there's that kind of Hellraiser-esque mm. monster making love to a beauty, yeah. Beauty and the Beast yes. theme, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the religious themes, I think, come to the forefront yeah. a little bit more the, this time, which they didn't before, and again, it's very prevalent in the Hellraiser stuff. Yeah. But it's, it's just a better told story. You know, the, the story makes sense. You can actually follow the different characters through. You're saying that Ashbrook now makes more sense because you can kind of follow his... Uh -huh. through Midian as to what it is he's trying to do and what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. right. I know Anne's been very vocal in her support of mm. this uh, new cut. Yeah. And I know Craig's seen it and uh, Hugh Ross was here earlier today. Yes. I mean, what's yeah. it been like sort of talking to all the actors that you were working with like 20 years ago, talking about this film? You, you know? said it, we, didn't, we, we saw them for the first time last weekend yes. for 20 years. I haven't yeah. seen them since we ran yeah. 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 Um, help, um, Night Breed Head, so... Uh, Amazing. It's great to see them. Yeah. Um, Craig's, I think, directing CSI. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah they're, still, they're, still, you know, they're still doing good and, and doing amazing things. And I think it's listening to Anne about her reaction yeah. as well, because she said she was 19 years old when she made it. Um, and her kind of railing of Babette and the other yeah. part of the movie you know, really echoes with her now, because she's gone on to write books about working with rescue home dogs right. and, and so on. So it, it was just really cool to see them again. It's not often you get a chance to see people that you worked with so long ago in this business and uh, be involved again in something so exciting. Last weekend was particularly new, unique because we had the Hellraiser cast and the Hellbound mm. cast and the Nightbreed right. cast, so that was um, a bit yeah. of a mind fuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my final question, obviously, you've just mentioned Hellraiser. I mean, you're obviously both well-known for your roles in the first two Hellraiser movies. Um, how do you feel about news that they want to do a remake and reboot this? Have, have you seen any of the um, artwork concept stuff that's out on the internet? No, I haven't. It's worth looking at that. Mm. That actually made me very excited. Mm. I think I'm the unique set of items before us that I could see. I can see the reasons for yeah. it. Yeah. No. Oh, no, I agree with you. No, when I saw the yeah, concept yeah, art, yeah. I I exactly when I saw that concept art. Uh, we know that they tried to do a remake recently just so they could keep the rights, yes. and they did it in two weeks. Yeah. yeah. But that Not, wasn't a remake. No, that, that was, was just, just even Doug didn't. Just, no, didn't know. Yeah, yeah, don't talk about that one. <laughs> um, so, and I think if you take it from a new angle, it is interesting. What they yeah. seem to have been doing is possibly taking you beyond the walls, if you like. Uh -huh. Looking at the artwork, it's possibly taking you more towards the vibe you know, where it's done by itself. That could be interesting. Um, I don't know. Part of the mystery and the power of Hellraiser is you don't know where they came from. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you know they come when you open the box, yeah. but what their backstory is and so on, which is explored in later movies. And I actually think that's the power in the first two mm, movies, yeah, yeah. is that you don't know where they come from. They have yeah. a kind of mystical religious context to them, which, dare I say, in the later movies, I don't think they do. They're because they've got CDs in their heads yeah. and, and cameras and things, and it's not quite... It's, it's not quite yeah. as powerful or as strong as image. Yeah. It's like a building image. for cinema. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> there are Lego cinema. There are Lego cinema. Yeah. It's, it's a great website. There's my little pony cinema. Right. Yes. <laughs> There's a Toy <laughs> Story yeah. cinema couple. That's an amazing by the legacy that yeah. that film's Well, we're looking at the Hello Kitty cinema. Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty. 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 Yeah. Um, we need the poo. Uh, for, uh, we need the poo. We need the poo cinema. Wrong. Just wrong. Oh well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what. That, but uh, have well, quite made it. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Nor should they. <laughs> so, 
So what are your, uh, your plans next with the uh, Cabal cards? Have you got any more screenings and festivals we are. to attend? We are. We, I know we've got a very busy three days. We're doing Bar, uh, Derby, Cardiff and Winchester over three days. Uh -huh. We've got that. We're going to Germany. Uh, weekend of Horrors at the beginning of November. Uh, so end of September for the, um, for the three days. 20 something around. Yeah, 20 something of September. Between now and Christmas, there's, yeah. there's pretty much every weekend there's something. There's a Paris and Vienna and Helsinki, which we're not going to. Sadly. Really not going to. Um, uh, Chicago, Texas, yeah. Austin, Texas, El Paso, uh, all over. It's it's going to be an amazing rest of the year. Yeah. Mainly because the interest is there, which is yeah. lovely. Mm. Lovely mm. to see after all these years. Yeah, gosh, yeah. I'm so grateful to everyone yeah. who turned up today. Yeah. It was really nice to meet people and just listening to people. See a full house. See a full house. I particularly like the couple who said, This was our first date movie. Oh, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, that's my husband. She didn't have a wedding ring on, did you notice? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, like, when the Blu ray comes out, come on. I actually talked to them. I think she was probably the one that needs to ask him. Oh, okay. She, yeah, I think she was wearing the uh, trousers. Oh, I see. I didn't get that far. They were lovely. They were okay. very lovely. <laughs> Sorry, you were very lovely. Ask him lots of questions. <laughs> Right, well we wish you all the best with the rest of the festival screenings and we really hope we can see you. Thank you so, back. so much for having us. Thank We're you. really, really grateful. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I hope the rest of the weekend just, just goes as, 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 as much fun as that was. Thank you. So Simon, Nick, thanks for joining us. Cheers, Cheers thank, you. thank you very much indeed.